Nah, you maggers, I was just catching on to bloody earwuggers. Here at Lensman, we've been photographing the life of the city of Dublin since 1952. You could write several books about it. In fact, we have. So, in May 2019, when we were invited to photograph the presentation of a pound of chops to the Lord Mayor, we were intrigued and we brought along the film camera. It was the 75th anniversary of the publication of James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. And we learned that besides the dozen or so Lords Mayor of Dublin mentioned in Ulysses, dozens more going back centuries are name-checked in Finnegan's Wake. On the day we were there, a delegation from the Joyceborough Finnegan's Wake Reading Group presented Lord Mayor Niall Ring in the persona of Humpty Chimpton Earwicker with a copy of Roy Keegan's Panoply of Wakeian Characters, a copy of Finnegan's Wake, a bottle of James Joyce Gin, a loaf of Sing Pantry's Kennedy Bread from Cremore Bakery, Ballygall, and the aforementioned Pound of Chops from Etherson's Butcher's Cabra. There were readings, of course. For more views of Dublin, Joycean and otherwise, check out Irish Photo Archive at any time. I bought my first copy of Finning's Wake in 1988 and I hadn't even got past the first line when I met Roy, he was back in Dublin from about 89. He would calculate by multiplicables the altitude and multitude till he seesaw by neat light of the liquor where Twint was born, his round head stable of other days, to rise in undress masonry upstanded. Jack Randall. A wall worth of a skyscape of most eyeful height entirely, originating from next to nothing and celestialating the himmels and all, higher architecty tipty top loftical, with a burning bush above of its bobble top and with Lawrence O'Toolers clittering up and tumbles of buckets clattering down. Of the last was he to bear arms and a name, Vasily Bousleau of Risenborg, his crest of heraldry invert with answers, argent, trublant, hegoke, persuivant, horrid, horned, his scutcheon fest, with archer strong helios for the second. Hooch is for the husbandman handling his hoe. Ho, 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 Mr. Finn, you're going to be Mr. Finn again. Come days more, and oh, you're vine. Send days even, ah, you're vinegar. <laughs> and there's more if you can stand it. <laughs> I think I know the little game they're at, said Mr. Henchy. You must owe the city fathers money nowadays if you want to be made Lord Mayor. Then they'll make you Lord Mayor. By God, I'm thinking seriously of becoming a city father myself. What do you think? Would I do for the job? <laughs> Mr. O'Connor laughed. So far as our money goes. Driving out of the mansion house, said Mr. Henchy, in all my vermin, with Jack here standing up behind me in a powdered wig. Eh? And make me our private secretary, John. Yes, and I'll make Father Keown my private chaplain. We'll have a family party. Faith, Mr. Henchy, said the old man. You'd keep up better style than some of them. I was talking one day to old Keegan, the porter. And how do you like your new bastard, Pat? says I to him. You haven't much entertaining now, says I. Entertaining, says he. He'd live in the smell of an oil rag. And you know what he told me? Now I declare to God, I didn't believe him. What? said Mr. Henchy and Mr. O'Connor. He told me. What do you think of a Lord Mayor of Dublin sending out for a pound of chops for his dinner? How's that for high living, says he. Says I, a pound of chops, says he, coming into the mansion house. Says I, what kind of people is going at all now?